Uh, there's been a lot of uh, conflict uh, in the subject matter of what we call religious, spiritual, or especially in the Christian uh, community of the registered 501c3 uh, charitable designation Christian followings and or what happens in Canada um, under the uh, federal charitable registered Christian religions, uh, their ability to actually maintain an existence in the legal world when legalities in the system that they're surrounded with say that the book that they use, which would be the Bible, we'll just say it's the Bible, whether it's uh, we're using, uh, of course, and I know I just hope people are not going to stand too long on the idea whether I'm using the American Standard here with the Gideons or I'm using the King James Version that's right over to the side of me. Um, the key thing is uh, God's Word as we know it, what's there, and are they able to stand by this charter? Well, as we had spoken in previous videos, the idea of, or the thought to actually believe that you can have two charters at the same time is completely inaccurate misrepresentation of Romans 13, which we'll do in another video. But your position as a Christian is under the sovereignty of God with the charter that is placed before us, the word of God, with what his directions are, not man's uh, constitutions and uh, bill of rights and amendments to this, that, and the other thing. It's got to do with something that's laid down and established in God's word. So we're, um, we're going to deal with the subject matter of what's going to happen with Christianity in a world that now has surrounded it, because mainstream, mainstream Christianity is now surrounded in the legal world because it entered into that sandbox, not by the direction of God, but by legalists, lawyers, who infiltrated into the flock and told them to register their belief in God into the state so they can trade in money, in mammon. And due to that now, there's people that don't like the book that they use to preach out of. So, unfortunately, this book says, you can't be gay. You can't be a homosexual. No, you can't be effeminate. No, you can't be transgender. It's just not there. And therefore, they said that those that practice those things will not inherit the kingdom of God. From that level, I'm only telling you what the Bible says. But you're involved in the legal system that says that's okay. If you're a registered Christian religion in the legal to hand out money tax receipts to your members. Now the book has been declared in many court cases as a hate book. In fact, many parties who have actually felt they were discriminated against people who believed in the Bible as the Christian's charter had successfully sued commerce operations that basically refused to give service to same-sex couples or people that were engaging in homosexual activity. Therefore, the evidence is right now in front of you that these court cases as precedent show that your legal system that you think that you're so well informed in has now turned on you. But it didn't turn on you, it never was for you. It gets much worse. I ran across an article that was dealing with um, the Supreme Court Justice John Marshall, who uh, basically was in power in that field um, in the United States between 1801 and 1835. Though I ran across the article under the subject matter, any church who refuses to perform gay marriages will be destroyed. And they're quoting John Marshall, the Chief Justice of the U.S., in that period, made the historic quote, the power to tax is the power to destroy. Because these registered charitable religious factions have entered into the legal realm, which is not God's law, but the law of man under positive law, legal, 
they have now entered into a sandbox in the mammon to be now uh, in the situation where their power to operate could be shut down overnight. In other words, the life force could be pulled. The money that they operate on for the little pastor who likes to get his little piece of the collection plate each week, okay, as someone money changing in the temple, now won't be able to get that because he could lose the property that they built, the house, his house that may be beside the church, the pagan temple, and will now not be able to operate as he once did because the fact is he's not complying with legal rules for his tax exemption. We have to definitely separate what is of God and what has to do with the world of Satan. The kingdoms of Satan have nothing to do with the kingdom of God. Theocracy and democracy are opposites. Theocracy happens under God. Democracy happens under Satan. So, yes, they have every right to pull the plug on these money-changing false temples because they're not following the legal rules. And so I would have to agree with the state actually pulling the plug on these people, saying, if you do not comply with legal rules, you cannot operate as a legal registered charity, even if you are promoting Christianity. So when John Marshall said the power to tax is the power to destroy, this is far worse than what the article dealt with. Now this video is probably going to go about eight, nine minutes. Only reason because I have to correlate two things together here. So I'm going to read the article and then I'm going to tell you really what Chief Justice John Marshall said. Not just how it related to the ability for them to run an artificial person charity in the law. So, doesn't matter whether you're a Mormon, Seventh-day Adventist, Lutheran, Methodist, Pentecostal, Baptist, it wouldn't matter. Catholic, they're all in the same boat. John Marshall, Chief Justice of the U.S., said, the power to tax is the power to destroy. Now, in the article, it went further. It said, the fight to redefine marriage has implications for every church in America. If same-sex marriage is made law of the land, any church refusing to perform a ceremony can lose its tax-exempt status. This situation would be analogous to cases where churches post civil right refused interracial marriage. The Supreme Court upheld any church refusing to perform a legal marriage would lose tax-exempt status. Pastors refusing to perform these ceremonies, which go against the clear word of God, would also be sued personally for damages and attorney fees under civil rights law. Homosexuals have tried to make their campaign analogous to the struggle of African Americans. A host of legal protections is what they truly want. The, these are just two obvious legal consequences facing every American church and minister. Every church in America will either be in the gay marriage business or shut down. That's the fight being waged right now. Now, I can tell you they've already lost that fight in many cases. Many have been shut down. Many places that refused to cooperate with same-sex couples have actually had their businesses not only taken away by lawsuits, they've even lost property holdings they've had. You'll have to do your own research on that. I'm not going to go into this video. But the key statement here was, what really did Chief Justice John Marshall state in his, um, quote, the power to tax is the power to destroy? Well, if you're a taxpayer, the government can execute you, destroy you. If you're under God, under a separate sovereignty, no. But if you're playing in the sandbox of the secular world of Satan, in the legal sandbox of positive law, they can destroy you, execute you, 
put a virus into you, do whatever they want. Be aware what side you're on because it can take your life. 